others, but the entire global financial system. And if you look at some of the key issues here today. It says 80 ringgit. That's bloody good value for money. <laughs> and when you do see the tax at the back, you would see comments by five persons, uh, by Gordon Brown, former PM of United Kingdom. There's one by me where I said uh, I was asked to give a quote for the back of the book. Class dogged and in brackets, and to some more than a little annoying, very annoying, persistence, and an incredible nose for the fishy stuff, uncovered the hist of the century. The explosive exposes rock nation and precipitated the fall of the Malaysian government for the first time in 60 years. So that's a compliment. But what was more interesting was that there was not just Tony Poa and nice people giving quotes supporting Claire. I see here also Najib Raza. <laughs> wow, he loves Claire too. Everything is put on Sarah report. I cannot stand for this. And when I read that, the picture of Gargamel. You all know Gargamel? Anyone watch Smurfs here? <laughs> Comes to mind. What was more interesting was a quote from someone that many of you would not know. Um, Rick, how do you pronounce his name? Hayton Waite. Rick Hayton Waite, COO of Petro Saudi and chairman of Global Mastercard. No small person. And this is what he said. It is clear that you are an active campaigning blogger rather than an objective journalist. Therefore, even if I were to be in possession of information relevant to your query, I will be unwilling to assist you in your questionable activities. Now, normally an author would never put such negative comments at the back of his book. But I suppose um, in this particular instance, comments such as this from Tun, uh, no, from, from Najib Raza, from uh, Rick uh, Hayton Witt, um, are basically compliments for the work that Claire has done, her dogged persistence, irritating dogged persistence, have basically done what, what I would say is the envy of all the secret spy agencies around the world, like CIA, like M16, all trying to create revolutions, uh, changing of governments in uh, Central America, in Latin America, in the, the, the African nations, in the Middle East, all being very, very unsuccessful. And I think they should all take classes from Claire because she did it for Malaysia. <laughs> she did it by not stopping. She did it by questioning and following up on every lead. And I got to know this because, you know, as whistleblowers, or I'm, I'm not quite a whistleblower, but as people who expose scandals, you get a lot of emails from various people claiming to have leaks, to have sources, to have information. And on 1MDB, very often they will write mails to Claire, either write to me, CC to Claire, or write to Claire, CC to me, and a few others. And I'll look at some of them and say, nah, this thing, not very important, I'll file it. But Claire would bother and be kind enough to reply to each and every single one of these comments and leaks and, 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 and purported information just to track down to make sure that she didn't miss a lead, didn't miss a genuine lead. And that's, that's, that's my conversation to her and I, I told her, how could you be following up on all of this? You'll never get any work done. But she did. And it is because of her sheer perseverance, patience and an ability, a real ability to be able to I, I, I say this in a positive sense, to seduce information out of people, <laughs> to, to, to get information that people would normally not share 
with a stranger. I believe many of the people who came with you with leads are not friends, are people you do not know, and somehow they volunteer information willingly to you, like a tap on a bad uh, beer barrel. Uh, and, and, and hence, you manage to get a lot of fragments of information, piece them together, and tell us the story of 1MDB on Sarawak Report. And I think this is, this is where uh, many of the young journalists, uh, journalists with ideal journalists who wants to uh, um, break into the big league, um, would probably have to um, learn, pick up, persevere, and hopefully, hopefully one day many of you, some of you, would actually make it as she did as well uh, going forward as someone who actually brought history to Malaysia. Um, I knew Claire since um, before 2013. Um, at that point in time, she was following up on Taib Mahmoud, uh, more of Sarawak. And uh, we had a chat on Sarawak. Didn't go very far then. We were talking about the Radio Free Sarawak, RFS. Uh, but subsequently, when Jolo came into our lives, uh, we got brought a lot closer together. We had a lot of, uh, do you call them secret meetings? Um, in Singapore, uh, we had meetings in Dubai. Uh, and we had meetings in London, plenty of those. When uh, Claire found it, uh, probably, what do you call it, um, too, too risky for her to travel to this part of the world. Um, the day I got banned from traveling, remember that I was supposed to travel to uh, Jogja. I was supposed to travel to Jogja for a, the, um, as part of my work uh, for the Penang Art District. Jogja was having the Jogja Art Festival. Uh, but it was during my trip there that uh, Claire had actually suggested then that uh, we catch up as well, uh, perhaps in Jogja where, where there are no, no big prying eyes. I said, okay, I bought my tickets, this is when I'll travel. And she said, okay, I will get my tickets soon. And uh, before, before, before I knew it, I couldn't travel anymore myself. But many, many would ask, many would ask, um, why is it that uh, despite doing all these uh, uh, traitorous, uh, treacherous, uh, stuff with a foreigner, uh, Tony Poor has never been uh, put in jail or even arrested, thankfully. I've just been charged for two defamation suits from the Prime Minister, but I've never really been charged by the police for all the work that I did for 1MDB. Um, the, the worst I got was being banned from travelling for about one and a half years, um, and that was also a slightly a close shave. The basis for banning me from traveling is because of Justo. Um, Justo was arrested in Thailand. He wrote a confession. And if you read the book, you read a lot about the confession itself, uh, how he was forced to, 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 to write that particular confession, how that confession was pretty much drafted for him. Uh, and in that confession, there was Tony Poa's name. So it was purely because my name appeared in that confession that I was barred from traveling out of the country. So I was being investigated in my links, uh, working with foreigners to bring down the parliamentary democracy in Malaysia. So I was actually banned uh, and being investigated for activities detrimental to parliamentary democracy. But perhaps, um, perhaps the, 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 the thing that saved me um, from, from any further troubles beyond uh, just being banned from traveling overseas is the fact that uh, uh, while I work with Claire, uh, I've done it, we have done it fairly carefully. Um, I've traveled to Singapore, met her at the airport, and flew back from Singapore. So, so, so technically, I didn't even enter Singapore. I've done that for Dubai. 
uh, and, uh, and, and I've made sure that in all the money dealings and the more tricky stuff, the ambiguous stuff, I don't want to know. Uh, Claire was responsible for getting the stacks of information from Justo on Petro Saudi. I said I don't need to meet Justo. I don't want to know how the information was obtained. Just give me the information once you have obtained the information. And together with her, we decrypted many other files. We um, put the puzzles together, pieced the puzzles together, uh, worked out information, worked out a storyline. Uh, she has the sources of information. I have mine. Put them together. Try to form a bigger picture. And uh, and that was that was, the, the 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 real big start to this relationship was really in the December January of um, 2013 and 2014. So that was a period where where the collaboration really really started. That's when the excitement started because that's when the first uh, agreement for Petro Saudi uh, one MDB joint venture was finally exposed, and it exposed the fact that. It was pretty much a scam of a joint venture and it kickstarted everything else that followed since then. 1MDB was a, was a, was a scandal that was a long time in the making. Uh, many people only started paying attention to it perhaps after the, 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 the previous general election, not the last one, the 13th general election. But um, for those who know, my first question in Parliament for 1MDB started in uh, March 2010, March 2010, and it was on Petro Saudi. And the reason why the question was asked was very simple: One MDB just borrowed five billion ringgit, and they chucked, they invested nearly 90 percent of the entire sum in a single deal with a company that nobody has heard of. Now that has to trigger alarm bells, uh, and that those are the type of alarm bells that journalists should ring when you see such things. Why the hell? Check out Petro Saudi. No records on Google. Check out the owner, Tariq Obaid. Nothing on Google until the agreement was signed between 1MDB and Petro Saudi. Surely something must be wrong for a Malaysian government sovereign investment fund to invest so much money in a single investment in a company that no one knew about. And that should be the start where, where the investigations start as to why did they do this, how did they do it, who did they do it with, um, um, what has been the outcome of these results. And it was through all these little, little bits of information, questions, puzzles that we finally led to where we are today, where the entire 1MDB scandal has been exposed and now the world knows the truth. So it could have been prevented earlier. Uh, very much earlier, uh, if there were more people trying to dig up more information, uh, it is said that we, as we as a country, are now settled with another 32 billion ringgit of debt to clear all 1MDB debts. Uh, that's on top of the 7 billion ringgit that the taxpayers have already forked out to pay uh, for 1MDB's debts. And that doesn't yet include another 10 billion ringgit of interest. Uh, that we will pay over the next five to five to ten years uh, for the bonds that 1MDB has borrowed. Had 1MDB been nipped at its butt, we would have saved ourselves of all this uh, pain. But we are also thankful that we managed, we actually managed to achieve the historic victory in the last general elections. For if not, then the whole would have been much, 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 much deeper. So I, so I do not want to speak too long. This is not my floor. It is Claire's show today. Uh, you hear me all the time. Uh, it is Claire's show today. Uh, I do really, over here, ah, I forgot, um, um, want to um, give my thanks to Claire for what she has done for Malaysia, for what she has done for me, when I do go to London in the last few trips, uh, I actually uh, save, you know, I'm a Kiam Siap person, right? Uh, Chipscape. Uh, she has offered me her place uh, for accommodation. I've gladly taken it up. London accommodation is expensive. Uh, I just want to take this opportunity today, uh, perhaps before she comes up to speak, I'd like to hand over a little souvenir, uh, uh, not very expensive, a little souvenir to her, uh, if the organizers allow for it. Uh, to express my thanks and perhaps on behalf of all Malaysians for the effort she has given for Malaysia.